So you're thinking about making the move from Illinois to the fine state of Michigan. Maybe it's been a thought for quite some time, or maybe you just happen to stumble across this video to see what the racket is about. Whatever the reason may be, be sure to stick around until the end to understand why you should move immediately. Let's get to it. I have been getting several calls, texts, and emails from people who are residents of Illinois, anywhere from the Chicago area to Springfield, looking for a change. And that change came down to the one and only state of Michigan. What's going on everyone, Andrew McManaman here with Living in Michigan, a Michigan realtor helping people like you buy, sell, and invest in the amazing state of Michigan. So if there's ever anything you need, my contact information is in the description so you can reach out anytime. I'd be happy to be your go-to resource. I'll be touching on several reasons while real people who contact contacted me are planning to leave the state of Illinois just to give you some insight on why you should consider it as well. Illinois ranked number three for places people move from to the state of Michigan behind Ohio and Indiana, which I have videos for and will link in the description for you. 2019 data gathered by stacker.com found that over 10,000 people moved from Illinois to Michigan within a year's time. And I'm going to tell you the reasons why they did outside the fact of moving for family. The first thing I want to tackle before I get any further is the cost of living and home prices, just to put the rest of my points into better context. Taking a look at these two charts side by side provided by bestplaces.net, you can see on the left that Michigan ranks 91.5 overall, and on the right, Illinois ranks 93.7 overall. Of course, it's a given being how similar these states are with their geographic locations and offerings that nothing would be too dramatically unbalanced. The couple items that stand out much higher on Illinois' list opposed to Michigan's is the health, housing, median home cost, and the miscellaneous section slightly. The health section is based on the standard daily room rate of being in a hospital, cost of doctor visits, dental visits, etc. And of course, the Northwestern Memorial Hospital is ranked among the top across the country, but the University of Michigan healthcare system ranks a little higher on that list, according to Newsweek and several other sources that make U of M rank number eight and Northwestern rank number 15. As far as housing and the median home price, of course, at a glance, this $27,000 or so difference isn't huge by any means, but it can make a big difference for first time home buyers or people on a very tight budget wanting to get into their first or next home. Maybe not so much on the monthly payment side of things, but when you think about all the people who max out on a $200 to $215,000 pre-approval, which is very common here in Michigan, the median home cost in Illinois wouldn't be attainable for this whole buyer pool. But I can agree, not all homes are priced that high or higher, it's just something to consider when choosing one state over another, because at the end of the day, thousands of people from California pour into Michigan every year to watch their dollars stretch further, and people from Illinois do the same exact thing, it's just not to that extreme extent. As far as miscellaneous, that would be your goods and services, from shopping, entertainment, restaurants, repairs, etc. And when it comes to Michigan's transportation being higher, it has to do with car costs and insurance, which I will link to a video I did a little bit ago in the description, so you can see the recent changes that have helped decrease this overall transportation score. Transitioning into why Illinoisans are leaving their state. One of the most frequent things that I have heard from a few of these residents and even read in several articles is that even Illinoisans think that the state they live in isn't a good place to live. Of course, I'd have to assume it depends on where you are in the state, but I heard it frequently enough that I wanted to bring it up. I believe there was a 1 in 4 ratio of people who thought their own state of Illinois was a bad place to live. I couldn't imagine what it does to the mindset and overall atmosphere of the state when negativity and complaints come to the forefront and cover up the pieces of good a state actually offers. Of course, there's instances like that in Michigan, just like there are across any other state across the country, but Michigan is by no means known for hating its own state. I have talked quite a bit about what Michigan is like, how the people are and whatnot in other videos, and the consensus is Michiganers are passionate about their sports, their lakes, the products that have originated here such as Verner's, Better Made Chips, and our amazing Detroit style pizza with perfectly cooked edges and ingredient ratios that can't be replicated. Wow, they are freaking delicious! While Chicago has this raised edge pie thing where each bite is just a mouthful of sauce and it kind of just gives me chills thinking about it so I'm not going to. Of course we don't eat, sleep, and breathe and obsess over it every second of the day like a raccoon with rabies. 
We just appreciate what we have and what we've made. And I truly feel that aspect alone can make or break a community feel no matter where you live, sleep, and play. Now let's talk about things to do. Many Illinois residents have said the only thing the state offers is Chicago and the rest is just rural farmland. But aside from Rockford, Peoria, Springfield, the areas sharing the Missouri border by St. Louis and the outskirts of Chicago, many people just didn't have a lot to say about the plethora of small towns throughout Illinois. Geographically speaking, Chicago butts up to Lake Michigan and the only other bodies of water around are the Illinois River, Mississippi River, and a few other connecting lakes and reservoirs. Michigan is completely surrounded by water, so aside from having the ability to do whatever your little heart desires on the water, there's coastal cities all the way around the Mitten State that are unique in their own way and should definitely be added to your bucket list. Of course, there's Illinois Beach State Park, the Navy Pier, the Art Institute of Chicago, Six Flags, along with several other state parks. Illinois and Michigan are fairly similar in their offerings in that regard, but Michigan still most definitely beats Illinois in natural beauty, landscapes, lakes, etc. And on top of that, you can have a lower cost of living. So where does that leave the winter season? Just like my videos talking about Indiana and Ohio, these states are very close to each other, so they will experience the four distinct seasons Mother Nature offers. But just to put this into more perspective, I'll compare the two cities people think of most when talking about Illinois and Michigan, and that's Chicago and Detroit. Of course, I'll preface this by saying Chicago is at the most northern part of Illinois, so the snowy experience will be similar to Michigan's, but if you scurry south some more, you may be able to cut the rain and snowfall inches in half. On average, Detroit has 183 sunny days a year when Chicago is 189. Detroit gets about 33.5 inches of rain a year, whereas Chicago gets 38.2 on average. Detroit averages 33 inches of snow a year, whereas Chicago gets about 35.1 inches. So these two cities are very comparable to one another. Chicago gets more rain and snow, while Detroit has a few less sunny days. While these two states being similar in many aspects, where does that leave business and job opportunities? Well, it's not a secret that Michigan is the auto capital of the world, employing tens of thousands of people every single year, and several of my clients coming from out of the state are within the auto industry to capitalize on the opportunity of being in the automotive powerhouse we call Michigan. Illinois is seeing a mass exodus from not only residents that live in the state, but companies as well as the infrastructure and incentives to do business in the state actually do more harm than good. So several businesses will just station themselves 20 plus miles away in Indiana so they can actually operate without being swallowed whole by the taxes they have to pay. Which transitions into another thing that has been brought to my attention and that's crooked politicians. Of course, I'm not going to try and put my debate hat on and talk politics because each state and country across the globe could probably use a better somebody up there making better decisions. But it was interesting to find and hear time and time again about the crooked politicians of Illinois. Whether or not this fact is true or not, I heard three to four out of the five governors they've had spent time in prison, and that is just wild to me. And all the charges seem to come down to personal financial gains. So the argument of Illinois' government not having their best interests in mind gets put into further perspective. And last but not least, we have the quality of life. As I mentioned before, the state of Illinois is losing residents and businesses by the day, which will decrease the amount of tax revenue that could be used to help improve the state's quality of life. The concern a lot of Illinois residents have is without Chicago, the state is nothing because so much time, effort, and money has been poured into the city of Chicago, but they can't be said about the other cities in the Prairie State. For those of you that live in Illinois or moved out of the state, what's something I missed? Drop your experiences and thoughts in the comments below. I hope this video created a little perspective about Illinois in comparison to Michigan. If it did, give it a big old thumbs up hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell so you never miss out on an upload. If you ever have any real estate needs, feel free to reach out anytime. Until next time.